Corey Seitz says, what are your thoughts on John 15, 2? And the Greek word for takes away. I've heard that it would be more accurately translated as raise up. This word seems to change the verse's meaning. Yeah, I, I get you. So let's look at that together, y'all. John 15, 2. This is about the uh, the vine and abiding. Jesus says in John 15, 1, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Now that's a deeply powerful thing to say because they would have thought of Israel as the true vine. But yeah, if you're not even in Israel, if you're not in Christ, not ultimately, not eternally, right? You're not going to be eternally part of that. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. I'm going to read more just so we can get this. Um, we, we can get more context. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him... He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, and he is uh, in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown to the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So the, the idea is like, yeah, if you abide in Jesus, you'll bear fruit. You bear fruit, you're proving you're really his disciple, if you don't abide in Christ, if you don't remain in Christ, if you don't identify with Christ, you're not you're not going to be you're not going to have eternal life. Ultimately, um, there's like are there two categories or three? Okay, so you've got um, <clears throat> people who don't abide in Jesus and they're thrown away like a branch and wither, and they're gathered, thrown to the fire and burned. Okay, that, this seems to be talking about judgment here. Okay, you you don't have eternal life, you wither, you end up in judgment. The 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 symbol of the fire there. What about verse two though? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Is that the same as the branch that doesn't abide in him? Because there are branches in him that are not bearing fruit. Is that the same as a branch that's not abiding? Maybe, because Jesus says, if you abide in me, you will bear fruit. So maybe you're not bearing fruit is showing that you're not abiding in Christ, in which case this is ultimately the person who's not saved in the end. Well, this scares people. They're like, what if that's me? Well, like, well, well it might actually be talking about Israel more than individuals about how they didn't they didn't hold fast to that messianic hope and trust in Christ and so they ended up not not abiding in him. Um now some say this phrase takes away could be translated differently as uh like pruning. I wonder if we get a translation that actually does this. Or he lifts up, not pruning, but lifting up. Here it's he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That's NIV. Here in the New King James, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. ESV, every branch, you know, he takes away. Uh, they do have footnotes. Um, let's see. New King James, I think, has a footnote here. Yeah, where it says, you can't see the footnote, but I can't. It says lifts up. Okay, the footnote there, a little number one next to he takes away. So it actually in the footnote says, or it could mean he lifts up. Like what that means is this is a genuine option for the meaning of the term. Um, I can tell you the term in just a second here. Sorry, let me, this is going to be too small for you guys to see. But let me look at the passage. Uh, John, John 15, 2. Um, Ere, it comes from Aero, or I Iro, excuse me, Iro. And it can mean to raise up to a higher place or a higher position to lift up, to take up, to pick up. Okay, that could be a positive thing. It could be talking about stones. We're lifting up stones. We're raising them up like you're doing a building thing. Um, but it can also mean to carry away or to remove. So which is it? Is it, is it being lifted up like a, like a, a vineyard vine dresser goes around and says, ooh, this branch isn't doing so good. Maybe it's covered under the others, it's not getting sunlight, or maybe it's dipped down into the dirt, so it's not getting the proper photosynthesis going on. So I lift it up, put a stick under it, I lift it up so it might bear more fruit. In which case, you know, we would we would treat it differently. John 15, 2 would be every branch of me that does not bear fruit. He lifts it up, he treats it in some positive way so that it might bear fruit. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. The problem here is it doesn't tell us why he lifts it up, right? The rest of the whole section only gives you two categories. 
people who are like bearing fruit and they're they're in Christ and they're abiding in him and the people who are not abiding in him they're not remaining in him and they end up end up in judgment most translators to my knowledge go with takes away the scarier translation um i wonder how many don't that at least is some evidence of like hey at least a lot of people looking at this think it it has that scarier connotation then you can have an, another study if that's the case, if takes away, I lean towards takes away. I remember having studied this and looking at the options and uh, <clears throat> I, I don't have a teaching through John here online, but I've taught through it uh, elsewhere. And I, I thought I couldn't, I couldn't in good conscience say it means lifts up here. I felt like maybe it meant more takes away. I could be wrong there. That, that was my, in, my understanding at the time. Um, if that's the case, I want to understand that because that's a big deal. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Now, um, he later goes on to say, hey, if you abide in me, you'll bear fruit. So it's not like we're saying you have to have a certain amount of good works in order to be still be saved. Uh, no, you abide in Jesus, that results in the fruit. You don't have any fruit. It's merely showing that you're not really abiding in Christ. That's all it would be saying. This is enough to say that there are such things as um, people who claim to be Christians that aren't really Christians and the only outward sign of this is the, their lives, the lifestyle they live, and that demonstrates that they're not really abiding in Christ, because if they were, they would bear fruit.